I used to do if he got a sun, pair of sunglasses, new pair of sunglasses or hat, is he'd race straight for the bathroom in the mirror and put them on and then see if he liked his new look. <laughs> so he very much used the mirror as a way to get a sense of uh, what he looked like. Okay, so what I'm going to do uh, with this other stuff is give you some examples of some of the things that I think suggest that great apes, and in this case of orangutans in particular, show a lot of these qualities of reasoning. Maybe not fancy reasoning, they don't write great books and they don't build skyscrapers, so they clearly don't think the way we do, but I think they show more of the basic kinds of thinking that you see in humans than we've, uh, we've allowed. So this is concept S that she's trying to use one as a hammer to get the, other, the lower piece to break apart. Well, the trouble is it just pulverizes the termite nest, so you get this awful mess of ground up, gritty termite mush in your mouth. So this doesn't work. No. Now, this might look like an interesting innovation that didn't go anywhere, but the other piece of the story that makes this even more fun is she's been doing it for a year. <laughs> and it never works. She got it from another orangutan. She watched him do it, and then she started to do it. Never worked for him either. I haven't ever seen it work for any orangutan, except once by a fluke. She's been working on it for a year. It has never succeeded, and she's still doing it. So what she's doing is entirely disregarding all of the information she's getting from the physical world, all of the information that she should be using to tell her what she should do to succeed. She's refusing to pay any attention. And she appears to be operating on the notion that I know this should work, I saw it, and it's going to work, I'm going to stick with my idea, and eventually if I try hard enough, I'll get the right answer out of this. So this, for one, for me, I think is the best photograph I have that illustrates something like the concept, that there's something inside her that's driving what she's doing, not something outside. Tools. Tools, big topics in grade 8 intelligence, ever since chimpanzees started to show what fabulous stuff they could do. Uh, actually, in captivity, orangutans are better tool users in, than chimpanzees. Uh, some of the early grade 8 researchers from the turn of the 20th century referred to orangutans as more nearly mechanical geniuses. Uh, and what happened in this case is an, ex is an experimental one. Uh, people put food out of reach up in a tree. So in this case, it looks like a can on a little stand. And then left a lot of stuff around the, um, the playground that might be used as a tool to help you get the food. So there are some things that are useful, like this can be a ladder, the box can be a ladder, and this stick, this, this, uh, this stick can be a rake. This piece of cloth is probably going to do you much good. So the question is what, what the orangutans or chimpanzees would do with this stuff, and you can see in this case what the orangutan did is they would have pulled in the box, because the box wouldn't have been positioned there, the box would have been put somewhere else. So the orangutan pulled in the box to make a ladder, and then got a stick to extend their reach to get the food off the top. Chimpanzees can do this too, and it was shown first in chimpanzees, but this is an example of what orangutans can do when you give them the right kind of background. Also, ex-captive orangutans do it. How people would claim it doesn't really count in ex-captives or captives, and it doesn't really count in rehabs because they've been touched by humans, so probably humans showed them how to do this. But I just thought I'd show you what free-ranging orangutans can do when there's not somebody trying to train them or show them. They pick it up themselves, even though they have access to the human world they still came up with it because they were interested. This is an orangutan on the left here, upper left here. She's got a stick. She's going to put it in this hole, which is a keyhole. There's a bar lock, and what she uses it to do is jimmy the, the bar lock so she can open the store. It's a food room, so of course she wanted to get in. <laughs> here, there's one uh, combing her hair with a comb. This orangutan is hanging a hammock so she can ride in it. Okay, this one at the bottom, I know of one person in this room who knows this is. This is Davida brushing her teeth with a proper toothbrush, and she's even got the little mug of water that goes with it. She knew the whole human routine. Okay. This orangutan is sawing apart a four by four with a two person saw, and apparently she placed the four by four on top of braces before she started working. Okay. This one is washing the laundry. When she's at the ringing stage now, but before she did that, she dipped the, took the clothes in the water, applied soap, took a brush, brushed them, and now she's ringing, and then she will dip some more. And this last one is an orangutan who's taking a, co a canoe for a ride down the river. She actually untied it. It's full of water because they used to fill the, the canoes with water to sink them so the orangutans wouldn't steal them. <laughs> Not enough. She took it, untied, untied the knots, got it loose, bailed out all the water, reoriented the boat, and then took off for a right down. <laughs> Nobody really minded if they took the boats, except they didn't bring them back, so. <laughs> now, 
Now, when you look at forest life, it doesn't look quite that fancy, and it's a little more difficult to, to, um, to understand, but I'll show you some of the things that my rehabs do. This is an orangutan who's after a coconut. These orangutans are on an island. They're its captives again, and they're provisioned. Coconuts float, so she's after a coconut which is floating on the water. This water is too deep for her to go into because she was a water liker, so if it had been more shallow, she would have been in there. So it must have been too deep. And this is the tool, a big stick that she's pulled up off of the water, and she's trying to reach her coconut with it. Now, it looks like a simple tool compared to some of the things I just showed you, but what you don't do, what, what you don't see if you only think that far, is the other piece of solving the problem, and that is that she has to create herself a sky hook to enable herself to come close enough to the food to actually be able to even try to get it with a rake. So what she's got is she's holding on to a vine there, the end of a tree here, and also a third over here. I, you can probably see up there, you can see there are four or five strands that she's holding. They're tendrils, I think, from a fig tree, and what she's done is pulled them together so she, she's created a rope. She's not holding just one, she's holding several, so they're strong enough to hold her weight. And it took her four or five minutes to do that because she had to say, figure out where she wanted to be, and then she actually had to pull the vegetation in place. So it's not a tool, but that's on top of the fact that she's using a tool to try and get the food. Another one, this is another one, looks simple. Here she is trying to get yet another coconut. The coconut's over here now, and it's floating away with the current. And now she's got a branch that she's broken off that she's trying to reach it with doesn't quite reach, so what she does this time is she tosses it. Now what's interesting about that is she seems to have some notion of the distance that she's reaching, but it's not quite far enough, so you have to make something reach farther. This is the best photograph I have that shows something like it. It shows up better when you see them using several tools, so sometimes they'll try and reach something in the water using a stick. The stick is too short. What they do is put that down, and they go and get a longer stick. So the choice of the next stick is not random, it's very systematically one that's longer and more suited to the problem. So it looks as though they don't just have a simple idea of a tool, but they have an idea of what properties the tool has to have in order to do the job they want. And if it doesn't work, they know how to fix it to make it better. Okay? Planning. Planning is something we've thought about as unique to humans because it involves thinking about something in the future. It's not there right now. So you must have to have it in your mind if you're going to be doing your behavior and organizing your behavior around something that isn't pleasant. So that's a sense, that's one of the reasons that people think planning must have some uh, sort of reasoning or thinking component to it. This is a real little one, but again, it's the best shots I have. This is Chechuk. He was actually sitting on this platform before the series started, eating a watermelon. Then I guess what he wanted is some water to drink. So he took his watermelon shell, left the platform, walked over to the water, the edge of the water, here he's carrying his watermelon shell, walked over to the edge of the water, took a sip, filled up his shell, carried it back to the platform, and then went up and drank with it. So it's a very short plan, it's only a couple of minutes, but he clearly had some objective in mind, set up his behavior in order to achieve it, and it involved going and coming back. The better one I have is one where the plan apparently took about six hours to unfold, or at least the planning was that far ahead. It was one from one of the orangutans I showed you in the camp. Her name was Princess. She was a very nice adult female orangutan. Um, and she used to hang around with people a lot. One day she was hanging around the local bunkhouse where there were a lot of research volunteers. And uh, about two o'clock in the afternoon, and she was really, she had a little one-year-old daughter, and the two of them were sitting on the porch and all of the research volunteers were oohing and aahing at how nice Princess was. She hung around for a while, and after about a half an hour, she decided she'd had enough of it. And the way she normally did, she ambled off and started to head towards the forest. And the way orangutans do it is they climb up the wall and over the roof. So she climbed up to the peak of the roof towards one end of the bunkhouse and started to leave. And then she stayed up there for a while. Instead of continuing into the forest, she turned around and came back and sat down on the porch again. And from the time she came back, people were saying, she is so nice. She's just so extraordinarily nice. They got to be 4 o'clock in the afternoon when they gave food down on the dock. Again, orangutans are food obsessed. She didn't leave. She stayed with the people. It got to be 6 o'clock when it starts to get dark. She should have gone and made a nest to sleep at night. She stayed with the people on the porch. They all went inside to get ready for dinner. She lay down and slept over the threshold of the door. 8 o'clock at night, the dinner bell rings. People go out. There's Princess, still asleep with her one-year-old baby, sleeping right across the door. So they very carefully step over her, lock the door, and go to, go 